Today, I'm gonna to show you how to go from this to this. We're gonna upgrade a desktop computer to an SSD. Stay tuned. Traditional hard drives that we've had in our computers for years operate mechanically. They actually have a magnetic platter that spins around inside of the case and it has a head that will actually pick up data off of the platter. Now, these have served us well for many years. However, there's a much better way to do it. With a solid state drive, as the name implies, it uses semiconductors to do all of its storage. So unlike a mechanical hard drive that requires mechanics in order to get things done, a solid state drive is completely integrated Integrated. Now, the best way I like to, you know, differentiate between these two is an old style hard drive is pretty much like a record player, while a solid state drive is more like an MP3 player. Now think about how you change to the next song on a record player. You actually have to move the needle over to the next song in order to play the next song, and that's exactly how it works on an old style hard drive. With a solid state drive, it's similar to changing to the next song on an MP3 player. You just push next. And the nice thing about that is the added performance that you get out of the SSD, as well as a considerate amount of power savings. So if you put a SSD drive into a notebook, you can actually get longer battery life. Well, what I'm doing today is I'm gonna upgrade this Lenovo here to an SSD. Over the last year, I've upgraded a lot of systems to Windows 10. Windows 7 lost support in around January of last year, and in that time, I've upgraded hundreds of systems to Windows 10. And in that time, only three computers that I can think of off the top of my head could not run Windows 10. Most of the systems that were just too slow, I simply upgraded them to an SSD and they ran fine. Now, unfortunately, there's a lot of manufacturers today, like this Lenovo here, that actually release their systems with Windows 10 and a regular spinning disk. I don't know why manufacturers are doing that. Seriously, if any manufacturers are watching this video, please stop. SSDs are cheap, and there's no reason to run a spinning disk in a system nowadays. Unfortunately, all you're doing is you're making your customer have to upgrade sooner down the road. If this has happened to you, and you have a new system, or even an older system that's running Windows 10, that's using the old style spinning disk, then hopefully this video will help you out. And I'm gonna show you how to upgrade that system to an SSD without losing any of your data. Now to start out with, what you're gonna need is an SSD that's at least at equal size of the spinning disk that you currently have. So if you have a one terabyte drive, make sure you get a one terabyte SSD. Now, without further ado, let's tear this thing apart. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is remove the side panel here. And you should have some screws on the back of your system that you can remove to get the side panel off. Um, all systems are different, but most systems have screws on the back and they have a side panel that will just slide off just like that. What we're gonna need here is another SATA cable so we can plug in our SSD to the same system that has our spinning disk in it. Now, if you don't have a SATA cable, you should be able just to unplug your CD-ROM and use the same cable from your CD-ROM to plug in your SSD. You're only using it temporarily, so you can steal that cable if you need to. Now, this system doesn't have a CD-ROM in it, so I'm actually gonna use this cable here. If you don't have an extra cable, you should be able to pick these things up for pretty cheap on Amazon. So what we wanna do is we wanna get into here so we can actually plug this in. Now on this case, you actually have to pull the front face off in order to get to it. And this face is actually a little difficult to get off. So what we're gonna do is pop this thing off. Just like that. And then we can actually slide this open right here. And then if you look inside this case, you can see right here where your other SATA cables plug in. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take this cable and plug it into one of these spots here. And then we're gonna hook our SSD up. Just like this. And then we also wanna steal power. So have a power plug right here we can use. Turn that around and plug it in just like this. 
Now that we have this all plugged in, we need to get some software that we're going to use to actually image the hard drive. So we're going to move over to a Windows computer and do that right now. So now that we're on the computer here, you need to get yourself a blank USB thumb drive. We're going to use that to actually flash the CD ISO image to a USB drive because, you know, the computer that we're doing this on doesn't have a CD-ROM. If you do have a CD-ROM, you can actually just burn the ISO to a CD and boot from that. But I'm going to show you how to make a USB drive out of this. So we're going to go ahead and open up Chrome here, and we're going to search for Clonezilla. And then from there, we want to go into Downloads. Then from downloads, we want to go ahead and click on stable. And then from stable, we want to do a couple things here. We want to go ahead and select our file type. We don't want to get zip. We want to make sure to get an ISO. And then you can also select your repository. So if the one that you're downloading from turns out to be slow, you can always go back and switch to another one. I'm going to click on SourceForge and then hit download. And then it's going to take a couple seconds to download here. So I'm going to go ahead and let it download and I'll be right back. Okay, now that it's downloaded, we can go ahead and close our browser. And if you plan to burn this to a CD, then you can actually skip the next step. But I'm going to show you how to put this on a USB drive. I find this to be not only faster, but in cases where the system doesn't have a CD-ROM, it makes it a requirement. So for that, we're going to use a program called Rufus. I already have it downloaded here, but I'll go ahead and leave a link to it in the description so you can get this program yourself. It's just a free little program that will allow you to write ISOs to USB drives. So we're going to go ahead and open this up now. And then from here, it shows our device that we already have plugged in. I got a little eight gigabyte USB thumb drive plugged into it. So right here where it has our disk or ISO image, we want to go ahead and hit select here so we can select the Clonezilla that we just downloaded. So right here in your downloads directory, you should be able to find it. If you saved it somewhere else, then you'll have to navigate to where else you saved it. So I'm going to go ahead and click the file and hit open and it comes up and then all we have to do now is just push the start button and it will write it to the USB drive. Go ahead and hit yes. Hit OK, hit OK, and now it should work. All right, now that we have our USB drive created, we're going to go ahead and plug this USB drive into the back of the computer here. Just pick any port that's free. And then we can fire this computer up and boot it off the USB drive. Now, you're going to have to hit a special key in order to boot your computer off of the USB drive. Now, your computer may be different. This is a Lenovo. So this one, you have to push F12 in order to get into the boot menu. On Dell, you also have to push F12. And on HP, I believe you have to hit Escape and then F9. But um, unfortunately, those are the only ones I can remember off the top of my head. So if you have a different system or if those keys don't work for you, then go ahead and look up your specific model computer and look at the manufacturer's website and they should hopefully tell you what you have to push in order to get it to boot off of a USB drive. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fire this thing up and get it booted off the USB and I will meet you in Clonezilla. Okay, so now that we have it booted up, we're going to go ahead and pick whatever language you prefer. I'm going to pick English because I don't speak any other languages. And then go ahead and keep your default keyboard layout. You can change the keyboard layout if you want, but you probably aren't going to need it for this. So go ahead and go to the next step. And then we're, we're going to want to do is we're going to want to start Clonezilla. And here we go. This is the main screen. So now what we want to pick here, since we have both hard drives plugged into the computer, we're going to want to pick device to device. Then go ahead and hit enter. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit expert options because with Windows 10, there's one little change that you have to make here in order to make the image work properly. So from expert, we want to go to disk to local disk. And then just give it a second there. And now you're going to want to pick which one is your source disk and which one is your target disk. Now this is extremely important. If you mess this up, you can actually write over your old hard drive with your blank new drive. And that would not be good. So it's a really, really good idea to actually check. If you look at this number right here, this actually contains the serial number to the drive. So if you're actually copying two identical drives, you can actually tell them apart by their serial numbers, just looking at the serial number on the drive. Now this one, I happen to know that my original drive is the 500 gig 
Seagate drive, and that's indicated by the ST at the beginning of the part number. And my new drive is the one terabyte crucial drive, and that's indicated by CT in the part number. So for my source disk, I'm going to pick my old one, the 500 gig. And then for the target disk, I'm going to pick the new one, which is the one terabyte. Okay, so from the advanced menu, in order to copy a Windows 10 partition, what you're going to want to do is go down to where it says force to use a sector by sector copy. Now, unfortunately, this makes the entire process take a really long time, but I've found that the image almost never works if you don't check this. So go ahead and check the sector by sector. And then if your hard drive happens to be failing, then you're gonna also wanna hit rescue. Once you choose all the advanced options that you wanna do, you wanna go ahead and hit tab to get out of the advanced options. So you can hit okay. And then the next step, you're gonna, it's gonna ask you if you want to check the source file system. Now, I'm not gonna bother that, I'm gonna skip it, so we're gonna hit okay. And then you wanna use the partition table from the source disk, so this is yes. Go, go ahead and hit yes. And then choose whether to reboot or shut down when everything's finished. If you want the computer to shut down or reboot when it's done, then you can choose it here. I'm gonna choose to do nothing. And then we're gonna go through this list here. And it's going to ask you a couple of questions. Now, here's where the warnings come in. You want to make sure that you have your source and your target disk picked correctly, because if you don't, you are going to lose all of your data. It's also a great idea to back your computer up before you do this as well. So I'm going to hit yes and hit enter. And it's going to ask you again. It wants you to really understand the possibility here that everything that is contained on the target disk is going to be destroyed. So if you happen to have mixed up the source and the target disk, you will lose your data. It's guaranteed. So we're going to hit yes again and hit enter. So now that the image has started, it's going to take a really long time for this image to finish. It, it's not uncommon for a hard drive to take 10 or 12 hours to image, especially when you're using the sector by sector copy. When you're not using sector by sector, it's actually pretty quick. But unfortunately, I've noticed that Clonezilla just doesn't image a Windows 10 partition very well. So that's why you have to do the sector by sector. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and let this thing run its course, and then we'll be back when it's done. 2,000 years later. Once the image is done, now it's time to actually mount the SSD into the case. So what you do at this point is take the old three and a half inch drive out and then mount the two and a half inch SSD into the case. Now, luckily, some cases actually already have provisions for the smaller hard drives, but if they don't, you can always get an adapter plate that will adapt the two and a half inch to fit in a three and a half inch slot. Now, these things work great in a pinch, but the nice thing about an SSD is unlike a traditional hard drive, an SSD isn't susceptible to damage from vibrations and other things like that. So you can be creative with your mounting. I've actually mounted them with zip ties before, and honestly, that's not the optimal way to do it. But in a pinch, you can get by doing it that way. So if this video was helpful to you, then please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I do a new video every week. And hey, before you go, check out a couple of these videos. Have a great day.